So welcome back uh, to this particular course and today we will be talking about workload and situational analysis method. So there are several method for this particular topic. Uh, so one by one we will be taking it. So before we go uh, into detail about varieties of uh, method which is available for this particular section, first let us understand that what is workload and situational analysis and what we are going to cover under this particular topic. So uh, for this we will be going for four major methodology or methods okay so first is nasa tlx it's very commonly used uh, tool uh, to understand the mental workload so nasa task load index and the situation awareness rating technique okay so that we will be doing along with we will be doing uh, multiple resource time sharing model so this model also we will be discussing critical path analysis and situational awareness global assessment technique these four uh, methods we will be discussing under this particular um, uh, uh, section okay so before we go into more detail of each individual uh, methods first let us understand because this whole uh, all these topic all these methods basically related to the mental workload so let us understand about what is mental workload and if we measure them what is the consequences and how it is useful to us okay so the amount of mental resources required to perform a set of concurrent task we will be calling it as mental workload okay so this particular definition specifically this particular the concept exists from long back however this particular definition was given in 2002 by uh, this particular uh, fellow during one of his uh, no paper presentation so what it says the amount of mental resources okay so maybe the memory maybe the perception and all other uh, information which is required so which those mental resources is whatever is required to perform a, a set of concurrent tasks so if you have a task to finish so whatever mental requirements are if you are trying to analyze that that we will be taking uh, that we will be calling it as mental workload or cognitive workload so sustained high mental workload will cause mental fatigue of course it's very similar to our all the physical uh, definitions right you know when a muscle is working for more than uh, no required time what will happen the muscle will get fatigue so uh, si similarly for mental uh, workload also if it persists for longer hours longer duration or the uh, intensity is very high in that case it will cause some kind of mental fatigue and of course if there is a fatigue it is expected that there will be the decrease in the performance because once there is a fatigue of course the performance will get you know affected and it is in the deterioration it it it, it actually declines okay and the detrimental health effects in long term so what happens in the physical fatigue we realize that fatigue very uh, easily because it becomes prominent however in case of mental fatigue we may not understand or may not realize it on the spot it's not it, it's not definite on that particular point of time however it has bigger impact than than uh, than the physical effect or physical fatigue so in comparison to the physical fatigue identifying the mental fatigue is difficult however the impact of mental fatigue is very very high okay so uh, holm in 2009 they uh, in his paper they claimed that if there is a sustained high mental workload it can cause mental fatigue decreased performance and detrimental health effects in 
long run. Here again I am saying that physical fatigue identification is very easy uh, uh, comparatively easy not very easy it comparatively easy as compared to you know mental workload and the effect the recovery is uh, quite quick okay as compared to mental health whereas if mental health uh, or mental um, workload pers uh, no, uh, sustained for longer hours definitely it has very detrimental health effect okay so uh, before we go into the uh, different methodology understanding the underload and overload is very important if in a particular workstation or workplace somebody is overload uh, feels overload due to different reason or due to different uh, work demand it can cause the mental fatigue whereas in the opposite also if there is no load filled by the particular person or it cause the under load then also it can cause detrimental effect or it can cause mental fatigue so being an ergonomist our always uh, like we always look for the optimization between the work demand and the uh, capacity of the mental um, uh, mental capacity okay so if we cannot do the optimization there will be either overload or underload and both underload and overload may cause mental fatigue so in this photograph you can see it's a image uh, taken from this particular source so it's not claiming that you know we produced it but this is very important to for us to understand this you know uh, depiction okay so if it is overload then you know lot of uh, you know um, problems happen okay so the person may feel lot of fatigue and uh, you know uh, the whole performance will deteriorate whereas that opposite if it is under load then also similar kind of situation will occur so mental uh, workload mainly describes the input aspects of the task the requirements and the demands made by the task on the employee and if it matches to the capacity or capability of that particular person it is optimized if it is not matching if it is more than that then overload if it is less than that then underload so mental workload is a multi-dimensional characteristics of a task requirement so mental workload determines the behavior uh, it perceives the subjective short-term well-being with you know consequences for health in long run and psychophysiological processes so all these three component behavior perception of subjective short term uh, well being with the consequences for health and the psychophysiological processes okay so it mental workload de determines all these three factors and based on that consequences based on that feasibility only we can understand it is overload or underload if it is overload we need to work on the reduction of the requirement whereas if it is up under load then we need to un, uh, work on how to utilize that particular person's or operator's capability or capacity in other task okay so understanding the mental workload in a particular situation in a particular uh, workplace is very very important and that's why these tools are or methods are to identify them in the workplace okay so mental workload if we talk about this has major four what i can say uh, structure so first is the identification of the primary task performance because when we are talking about a particular task there will be primary task and secondary task so identifying primary primary task performance and the secondary task performance are the major 
a basic requirement and then the physiological measure because when you are doing a primary task or you are doing a secondary task you are connected with your uh, the, the physiological responses ok. So, that physiological measure. So, suppose you are tensed ok you are doing some activity where you have a time pressure ok within a stipulated time period you have to finish certain amount of job. So, you have a time pressure uh, and then you are doing the job. So, that will get reflected on your varieties of physiological responses may be breathing, may be uh, breathing pattern or may be you know cardio uh, vascular uh, uh, cardio respiratory uh, parameters or uh, may be you know um, uh, fatigue ok. So, all these physiological responses can need to be checked or need to be measured when we are talking about mental health, uh, health as well as the subjective rating. Why subjective rating? Because perception of a particular workload is very very subjective in nature. So, if I suppose to read a journal paper uh, of 5 pages ok, uh, maybe within uh, uh, you know half an hour or 45 minutes I may not feel stress or I, I feel enjoyable because this particular subject is very much interesting to me. However, the person who is not to this particular field or this particular paper is not connected to his or her in or interest, interest, this 45 minutes is very much tiring for him uh, or her, right. So, subjective understanding, subjective rating is very, very important when we are talking about this particular mental uh, workload. So, when we are talking about mental workload measurement, we have to understand what are the primary task performance measure, how do we actually measure the uh, primary task performance, how do we measure the secondary task performance, primary task, task, task performance is like the performance which uh, which is directly connected to the goal of the system. Secondary will be surrounding ok, which are subject you know near uh, in the in that particular environment. So, understanding the primary task performance and the secondary task performance and measuring that is very important for mental workload associated physiological measure and subjective ratings ok. These four components need to be measured when we are talking about mental workload measurement. Now, let us understand in detail uh, with an example for the primary and secondary task ok. So, what is the definition? A primary task is defined as the real world task which is the main one has to carry out by that particular person. So, if we talk about cycling, cycling uh, you know using a cycle, bicycle somebody has to go from one place to another. So, primary task is cycling. So, here you can understand how we have divided these things. So, primary task what we are saying? You need to understand the road condition, you need to understand the uh, who are the pedestrian in that particular road, then overtaking the cars or bikes and over uh, somebody is coming from the opposite side. So, these understanding is very much important when we are talking about the riding a bicycle. Whereas, secondary task will be what are the number of displays available in this if he or she has some different types of bikes. Then uh, if there is some sound alarm, if uh, some kind of vibration alarm. So, if some extra uh, arrangements are there in that particular bicycle, how do we perceive it and respond towards that. So, that will be the secondary task. So, this particular example is given in this particular paper for more detail you can refer this particular paper. So, while doing this particular primary task and secondary 
task what are the attentions required so information first the information will be processed through the automatic uh, processing units so uh, first is physical balance okay so when you are riding a bicycle you need to balance it physically and also you need to control the whole process like you know handle the particular bicycle bar and then uh, brake and uh, you know uh, uh, f when to paddle all these balancing and coordination propulsion how it is moving what is the road condition based on that how much force you need to apply all these things are very much required when we are talking about primary task in the bicycle riding okay so um, uh, so you you can understand from this particular thing that primary task and secondary task is in a circular mode so first you give more attention to the primary task and then you get also responses from the secondary task now let us understand the definition of secondary task a defini uh, a secondary task is the peripheral task okay primary task is the main task which they he or she need to perform okay without that the system will not function whereas secondary task are the peripheral task to a primary task in a situation requiring multiple task performance okay so that is called secondary task we will go for more example with uh, driving simulator then we can understand it more okay so this a secondary task is very much connected to your reaction time okay how quickly you are responding to a particular information okay so the level of mental workload in a task can be directly inferred from measures of attention attentional capacity in the secondary task technique participants are instructed to maintain consistent performance on the primary task so while performing the secondary task it is not desired that you are not maintaining the concentration or performance which is required to complete the primary task so primary task has to be fulfilled secondary task uh, while doing the secondary task as well so you cannot uh, compromise on the attention level of primary and secondary task so differences in workload between primary task are then reflected in the performance of the secondary task so if the primary task is very very crucial very very critical in nature then it is advised that uh, the, in the whole design the uh, secondary task or information related to secondary task should be minimal if that is minimal then only uh, the person uh, will be able to give more attention to the primary task however if there is a diversion there is always a chance of accident or failure of the system so designing the um, uh, no designing the percentage contribution in a whole system of the primary task and secondary task is very very important and the decision has to be taken by the designer based on several you know um, uh, experiments or experimental results okay so for each context primary and secondary tasks are different and the contribution need to be calculated beforehand so that there is less chance of accident so optimization of these two combinations are very very important now if we go again we take this uh, the earlier example uh, so what it says that you know uh, when there is a task shifting first let us understand what uh, how uh, what are the primary and secondary task in this particular example it says that observe in the primary task mainly the observe the road and traffic condition and observe the environmental situation okay whereas in the uh, second uh, secondary task it says that you know condense the control signals delivered through visual auditory tactile or mixed mode okay for these cases whenever these are frequent 
नो गोइंग स्मूथली द समान कैन पे अटेंशन ओवर हियर डेफिनेटली एंड दिस इज वाइसी वर्सा इट्स नो इट्स इन रोटेशन सो इट्स किप्स ऑन गेटिंग दि फीडबैक ओके द सेम थिंग वी मेन्शन फ्रॉम दि सेम पेपर सो यू कैन रेफर द पेपर यू कैन गेट मोर डिटेल अबाउट इट ओके नाउ in a particular driving simulator uh, nor uh, for this particular example okay it's uh, it's in 2013 so what in this particular um, uh, particular um, uh, simulation technique or simulator what do they try to do when someone is driving uh, or performing any task in the driving simulator what are the major tasks or primary tasks available okay so uh, so here they understood first is speed then is headway means what is the distance is there between the two car and the uh, lateral control okay so uh, the simulator records the data about all these three factors based on speed lateral position and distance from vehicle which is in front of that particular simulator okay so it's a simulator so they can and you can understand the speed and headway are connected no it's a very complicated situation if some some car is you know uh, about to stop okay you need to judge the speed of the car which is in front and accordingly you have to control the speed of your car also you have to take an uh, account which is coming from behind so how so this this speed control and the headway understanding is very very important and this is the primary task whenever you are driving okay driving on a road and same thing can be measured in a driving simulator and this can be you know uh, using a standard error around the uh, you no know, regression line you can understand this uh, what is the connection between that what is the actual correlation between that okay now for the secondary task in this particular driving simulator this particular experiment what they try to do while driving in a particular uh, type of terrain uh, type of speed and the uh, headways are you know uh, varying continuously in the simulator in that case if there is a secondary simulator uh, stimulus okay stimulation then how quickly the driver is responding towards that in this particular example you can see they mention there is uh, two figures okay so what they have done they have you know uh, one vertical flag and another flag which is rotating from zero uh then uh, 90 degree 180 degree and 270 degree so as soon as they are rotating at 90 degree you have to react to it you have to uh, give a response to it okay so using that particular data or using that particular reaction time data the person can uh, the the researcher can understand how quickly the responses can be grabbed and if the positions are this then how the perceptions will be okay so if you want to place uh you know um, uh, maybe switch off uh, your uh, music system so if there is an error in that particular system how quickly you will be able to control it okay so if you want to understand that position location and all those thing maybe using this type of simulation you can uh, do experiment and you can understand what is the impact of uh, such secondary task on the primary task impact okay so that way it is possible now when we are talking about primary task and secondary task and the mental workload as i mentioned earlier it is very much connected to your physiological variables okay because um, when there is a stress when there is a um, uh, demand from the work situation or if there is no demand in that particular work uh, workplace or workstation then definitely there is an impact on the 
physiological variables. So major variables are heart rate variability, electrodermal uh, responses so you can get from the skin and then eye movement and pupillary response so gaze time, saccadic eye uh, movement on all those things. So these experiments may be few of the experiments we can take it up in the laboratory and we may able to uh, see that how it is uh, you need to um, uh, collect data ok. So, through uh, using eye tracking uh, system uh, we can have this type of small experiments ok. If there is an uh, there is a so, you know, simulation there is a uh, input primary um, responses ok primary data then how your physiological changes are happening and the event related potential. So, all these are the varieties of uh, physiological variables that you can measure. However, these are not only things you can have more uh, physiological variable based on the type of objective you have in your research. So, physiological measures are only applied if they are uh, un obtrusive ok. If it is unobtrusive then only they are applied and reliable and in conjunction with other measures of the workload. Individually uh, these variables may not make any kind of sense. So, uh, if you are doing the changes, the changes or intensity changes in the primary task, how the physiological responses are changing. So, that impact you can see, but individually if you see in a particular uh, no single condition the physiological responses that may not interpret your data, it will not be possible to interpret the data. Okay. So, if the intensity is changing or frequency is changing or severity is changing of the primary task and secondary task and what is the impact is there on the responses, physiological responses that you can measure. So, before, after or you know uh, 4, 5 uh, simulated condition, what is acting best, optimization, those things you can identify using these physiological variables. Subjective rating again as I mentioned as mental workload is very much subjective in nature, we really need to understand what is subjective rating. So, it is like you know um, the only index of true mental workload that uh, is being identified by you know explained uh, by Hart and Stevelin in 1988. So, subjective mental workload scores are sensitive to perceived difficulty ok. So, that is why I am saying this is very much uh, different from one person to another. The presence of automation, concurrent activities and the demand for multiple resources. So, how they are responding towards all these things. It is sensitive to change the effect when each effort ok, if when each effort maintains primary task performance at stable level. Because if the primary task performance dif differ then, then there will be a difficulties to understand the subjective rating. So, uh, keeping a primary task level constant you can see what is the impact is happening from the perception level ok. So, for us uh, typical set of primary tasks, how that particular primary task is being perceived by different group of people and how what is the differences are ok. So, that way the subjective rating will tell which group of people is suitable um, are uh, no are suitable for that particular task. So, subjective rating is categorized into two major form unidimensional and multidimensional. So, here as, as it uh, you know in a schematic diagram. So, unidimensional means to be simpler to apply and analyze, but offer only general workload score whereas, multidimensional subjective rating provide some diagnostic for identifying the sources of mental workload ok. Here 
for the unidimensional it's a very much general workload score so it says ke, yes there is an workload mental workload whereas in the multidimensional there is a chance that you get a direction what is the sources of those mental workload okay so that is the difference so le now let us go into individual tool understood till here we try to understand what is mental workload what are the you know dimensions are available for mental workload now we will start with the single single method so first i will start with the nasa tlx so it is a multi-dimensional subjective workload rating technique it determines the mental workload of a participant while they are performing a particular task the subjective experience of workload is defined as an integration of weighted subjective response so very important integrated weighted subjective response and the weighted evaluation of the behavior okay so this this will give you the indication what are the possible sources of mental workload for a particular situation so these are the main dimensions okay six major dimensions when we talk about nasa tlx so mental demand physical demand because you know mental demand and physical demand they are both very much connected if you are physically tired it may also cause you mentally tired if you are mentally tired you may feel you are physically tired so this mental understanding the mental demand and physical demand at a single space is very very crucial and this nasa tlx because it's a multi-dimensional so it actually gives you one better understanding what are the kind of sources you have for the mental workload then temporal demand effort performance and frustration level these are the major six dimension that normally talked in the uh, nasa tlx so let us understand what are these factors so mental workload so mental workload says how much thinking or deciding or calculating is required to perform a particular task so when you are doing a particular task or when you are performing a particular task it says that how much thinking is required how much decision making is there or how much calculation you need to do before you go for this particular task that is mental demand whereas in physical demand the amount and intensity of physical activity which is required to complete the Task. so force measurement and all those things okay temporal demand the amount of time pressure involved in completing that particular task effort how hard does the participant have to work to maintain their level of performance this is very important okay so again very very subjective in nature so how hard does the participant have to work to maintain their level of performance then performance the level of success in completing that particular task and frustration level how insecure discouraged or secure or content the participant felt during that particular task okay so job satisfaction it is very much connected to the job satisfaction so each subscale okay so these all are what we can say the domains of nasa tlx and it has all uh, scaling okay so each subscale of dimensions all these six dimension is presented to the participant either during or after the experimental trial so depending on what type of experiment you are doing depending on that you have to produce it they are asked to rate their score on an interval scale ranging from 1 to 20 1 represent low and 20 represent high this involves presenting 15 pair wise combination to the participant and asking them to select the scale from each pair that has the most effect on the workload during the task under analysis this particular procedure accounts for 
potential sources of between rotor variability differences in the workload definition between the rotors and the differences in the sources or workload between the tasks. So, let us understand the procedure for NASA TLS first you need to define the task conduct uh, of course HTA we cannot uh, deny HTA whenever we are talking about uh, no, any mental workload or um, cognitive behavior analysis. So, HTA for the task under analysis then uh, select participants uh, based on the uh, goals of the analysis. So, so who are the you know sample ok. So, sample selection then what you need to do you have to brief the participant by explaining the purpose of that particular study that perform that task under analysis. So, whatever task you have done the hierarchical task analysis and the same task to uh, need to be performed by the by those group of people ok. Follow the weighing uh, procedure and then complete the NASA TLX rating and get the TLX score calculation ok. So, this is the rating scale identification here you have uh, all these dimension mentioned here and for all the cases starting point is low high, low low here also low whereas in the performance you have good from the left hand side it is good whereas the right extreme right hand side it is poor. So, all the cases it is you know low on the left hand side extreme right is high whereas uh, for performance extreme left is good and extreme right is uh, poor. So, what it says? So, first the mental demand it says how much mental demand and perceptual activity was required. Again it is a perception right. So, how much mental and perceptual activity was required? For example, thinking, deciding, calculating, remembering, looking, searching etcetera. Was the task easy or demanding, simple or complex, you know exacting or forgiving ok. So, so these type of descriptions you have in the uh, mental demand. Now, coming to physical demand, it talks about how much physical activity was required ok. So, was that particular task was easy or demanding, slow or very fast ok, slack or strenuous, restful or laborious. So, you need to understand for all these things you need to give a rating. For temporal how much time pressure did you feel due to the rate or pace at which the task or ta task elements need to be uh, carried out or occurred. Wha so, it is very much connected you know when there is a workflow somebody there is a you know uh, something is coming and you have to do the work. So, those cases it is very much connected. So, was the pace was slow or um, ok leisurely or very rapid or you know it is very difficult to uh, cope up. So, how, how do you rate them ok. Then performance how successful do you think you were in accomplishing the goal of the task set by that particular experimenter. So, how satisfied were you uh, with your performance in app accomplishing those goals. So, these are the kind of questions you can you have to ask uh, during uh, the analysis of the uh, no, data collection of your performance. Then effort, how hard did you have to work to accomplish your level of performance. So, you, you are trying to understand from a person how much effort they have uh, they need to put for completing that particular task and the frustration level again low and maximum is high. So, how insecure, discouraged, irritated, stressed or annoyed versus secure you know gratified, content, relaxed and uh, you know complimented. So, where it is? It is on the left side or right side you need to get the answer from the participant about the frustration level while doing that particular job or particular task ok. So, this is basic description. Now, this is how this particular scale looks like. 
So, when we are talking about NASA TLX, there are lot of advantages also disadvantages ok. So, first let us understand when we are talking about primary task, secondary task, physiological and subjective responses ok. So, how what are the advantages are? When we are talking about primary task, so direct index of performance we are getting from NASA TLS. It is effective in measuring long periods of workload and performance, overload and individual differences in resources competition. Whereas in the secondary task, it can discriminate between tasks when no differences are observed in primary performance. Okay. So, when there is no differences in the primary performance, also it is useful for quantifying short periods of workload, spare attention capacity and even automicity. Okay. So, from NASA TLS for primary task and secondary task, these are the two major advantages. Now, coming to physiological factors or physiological raters, it is continuous monitoring of a data an increased sensitivity in measurement does not interfere with primary task performance. Whereas, when we talking about subjective rating, it is easy to administer and analyze. It provides an index to, uh, of perceived strain, multidimensional measures can be determined the uh, sources of mental workload. Okay. So, these are the major advantages for NASA TLX. However, again we have uh, you know disadvantages as, as well. So, let us uh, understand what are those disadvantages. So, based on the context of your application, you need to choose is NASA TLX is helpful or not helpful. Okay. So, let us go one by one primary task. It cannot distinguish between the task if they are within the attentional capacity of the operator. It, it cannot discriminate okay. and can be unfeasible or uneconomical uh, to um, you know, measure in real world condition and not a reliable measure in isolation. So, that is for the primary task. For secondary task, only sensitive to gross changes in mental workload, of course, okay, it cannot uh, do the fine tuning, okay, can be intrusive particularly at low levels of primary task workload must be carefully designed in order to be a true measure of uh, you know, spare emotion, attentional capacity. In case of physiological uh, responses, easily you know it is confounded by the extraneous interference because you know physiology, suppose heart rate variability, any for any other involvement like you know uh, something extra effort or personal factor actually affect the physiological uh, variables. So, for those cases it is actually a disadvantage. So, physically obtrusive instrument difficult to obtain and analyze those data. So, when you are talking about mental workload, you need to give the same conditions, very similar condition as actual or as real. However, for physiological data, you really need to have lot of instrument connected. So, very difficult uh, for you uh, know actually getting such data. In case of subjective can only be administered post task ok, uh, during task it is not possible thus influencing the reliability for a long task duration because if task is very long what happened in the initial stage and what happened in the last uh, stage of the task it is like very difficult to understand when the task is completed and you are getting the data. Okay, uh, it's like metacognitive limitations can uh, you know cloud accurate reporting and difficult to make absolute uh, comparisons between the participants because absolute comparison is really not possible because it's very very subjective in nature. Okay, so these are the disadvantages of NASA TLX. Now let us understand what are the tools required 
to come uh, no to perform NASA TLX. So, for primary and secondary tasks, the tool dependent depends on the application. Data collection for both can be uh, no computerized, uh, no for example, maybe driving simulator or any other simulator where you nearly need to understand okay primary and secondary side. So, any simulation is possible. Uh, you know, some cases separate laptop or computer uh, desktop can be used for a useful and accurate means of uh, performing a secondary task. Physiological me measures require complex monitoring equipment like heart rate monitor, maybe uh, skin conducting um, you know, monitor or uh, many other uh, physiology EMG or many other things ok, EEG sometimes ok. So, the tools are required according to the physiological experiment demand of, as I mentioned uh, based on the objective of your research you need to introduce what are the physiological variables you are looking for. For the subjective measures mostly uh, the pain and papers are normally being used because you ask them to rate it on the pain and paper. You can, it can, it, it can um, online also however it is best that you have the data with you so pain and paper method. Okay, so that is all for NASA TLX. Uh, uh, for next class we will be talking about the multi resource time sharing model ok. So, you all practice NASA TLX for your context for your situation if you have any doubt we can discuss in the discussion session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.